Just the other day, I saw this post, which distro will still be relevant 10 years from now. I don't have a time machine. I don't know if any of you have a time machine. And if you did have a time machine, there's probably more important questions to answer than what distro people are going to be talking about. But with that out of the way, if I had to bet on some projects that would still be around and still be getting attention, here's what I would say. First, let's talk about the obvious ones. The enterprise space, I don't expect to see some major shift. Maybe there's going to be new players. There's probably going to be new players. But when we talk about RHEL and SUSE, these are still going to be plodding along and still doing their thing. Frankly, there's going to be RHEL systems that are made today that are still in deployment 10 years from now, probably still running the same version. But I do think there's a possibility for a shakeup in the RHEL derivative space. Things like Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. Both of these are still relatively new projects, following the changes that happened to CentOS when it became CentOS Stream. I would not be surprised at all if some new project came to form in this space, or maybe some collaborative project where rather than having these two separate things, there was some like shared overarching thing. I know there was work towards that, and I don't know how far that has really gotten, but if some project came along that had a lot of funding and just controlled that space, would I be surprised? Not really. Now, would I say it's relevant? Probably not, but I think it's fair to say that the really long-term projects are still probably going to be around doing their really long-term project thing. Do I think Slackware is going anywhere? No. Do I think Slackware is going to get any more popular than it already is, which is not very many people using it? Also, no. Slackware exists, and it does its thing, and some people use it. I don't know why they do, but it's still a thing that's around. And speaking of old projects, Debian. These started around the same time, but I think it's fair to say that Debian has a lot more of a foothold than Slackware does now. Debian has a big ecosystem around it. It has a big community around it. They're still, you know, holding conferences. Debian is incredibly important. And a big part of the reason it's incredibly important is because of Ubuntu, right? And I know people will like meme about Ubuntu and meme about Snaps, but a big part of the reason why Debian is still so important is Canonical does have a lot of people working on Debian. Obviously, Debian has their community that is not connected to Canonical as well. But having those paid employees that send things back up to Debian is something that really helps out the project. And with Debian still being such an important thing in the enterprise space, I don't see that changing anytime soon, right? Like, if you think about running a server and you don't want to do the enterprise stuff, you don't want to do Red Hat, you don't want to do SUSE, Debian's usually the option you go with. Now, their site could probably use a bit of a facelift. I don't think it should look like, you know, the GNOME website, but, you know, maybe a bit of an upgrade, maybe a bit of a, a cleanup and make things a bit easier to navigate. Maybe something more in line with the Fedora website, for example. But Debian, you know, they're gonna do the Debian thing. Now, since I mentioned Ubuntu, let's talk about Ubuntu. Now, I think mainline Ubuntu is in a pretty safe space. I don't think Ubuntu desktop is going anywhere anytime soon. However, when it comes to the flavors, this is another interesting question. Because whilst things like Ubuntu, whilst things like, uh... Okay, you actually kind of just Kubuntu. A budgie is pretty close as well. For a lot of these, it's really going to depend on Ubuntu's X11 strategy. How long are they willing to keep the package around? Because things like Cinnamon, Cinnamon's still a very long way away from having good Wayland support. I'm actually not sure about Kylan. I can't comment on that one. Mate, also very far away. Unity is, uh, Unity actually doesn't have a maintainer right now, so yeah, there's that. And Zubuntu, well, XFCE is quite a while away as well. So, 
it really depends on do they care about the flavors enough? Is there a maintainer that cares enough to maintain the X11 package to keep the flavors around? Or would there come a point where they say, okay, these are being demoted to an unofficial flavor and we just don't have an X11 package. I know there's been some discussions about potentially dropping the package. I know there's been some rumors and things like that, but nothing is really set in stone. I think it's probably going to depend on when they decide, when the Kubuntu guys decide to drop support for X11 in Kubuntu. I don't know how many releases away that's going to be, and maybe it doesn't happen until KD7. But whenever it happens, that discussion is going to need to be had. And I think much the same can be said about Fedora Linux. The mainline versions, your workstation, your KDE Plasma, these are going to go strong, no problem here whatsoever. But there is a lot of spins that notably like i3 are never going to have Wayland support because there's the Sway version and there's other ones where it's like is it gonna happen like Mate and Compiz, Compiz isn't a thing on Wayland so is it just gonna be a Mate thing? Like what's actually gonna happen here and is there gonna be a point where Fedora says we're getting rid of the X11 package these are no longer spins anymore. And if that does happen, it's going to be a big deal. And I'm curious to see what the fallout is going to be. Maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe they just keep the X11 package around forever. I don't know though. But if anyone did consider dropping the X11 package entirely and just saying, okay, we're going to get rid of these spins, I do think it's going to happen in Fedora before it happens in Ubuntu. Fedora tends to be quite faster moving. I would hope they wait for at least the main things, like your XFCE, like your Cinnamon, like your Budgie, all to get Wayland ready. I guess Mate as well. But I don't know. I legitimately don't know what's going to happen here. Now, as for OpenSUSE, this is an interesting one because whilst they're kind of around and doing their own thing, I don't really ever see anyone talking about OpenSUSE, right? Like, you know, sometimes you'll see someone say, oh, I'm a Tumbleweed user. I don't know anyone that actually uses Leap. But I don't know. Like, this is already considered to be a relatively small project and doesn't really get the attention of Ubuntu or Fedora. Does it mean it's not going to be around? Probably not. It's probably still going to be plodding along doing its own thing. But I don't really see a world where... OpenSUSE becomes a really popular option that people are constantly pointing to. Now, if the world made sense, Linux Mint wouldn't still be a popular recommendation. This has been a popular beginner recommendation probably since Mint has been around, and it's still a popular recommendation today. And Mint is a very, very slow to change distro. It is very conservative with its changes, and that's a good thing, right? Mint today is more polished than it was 10 years ago, but you still feel comfortable using it either way. Mint is one of these projects where it's just always there. It's always there. It's always a good recommendation because things rarely ever change in a substantial way. NixOS, NixOS, NixOS. This is a very interesting case because I don't think the Nix package manager is going to go anywhere. And I don't think the concepts that Nix has built are going to go anywhere either. But the project for the past couple of years has been going through a lot of turmoil. Anyone who wants to pretend it's not is delusional. It feels like every couple of months there is some new thing that happens that just threatens to split the project in half. Would I be surprised if some fork or some new distro making use of the Nix package manager was what grabbed the attention of people. I wouldn't be. Do I think it is going to happen? Do I think NixOS cannot get through the problems they have? I don't think it's impossible, but I think they need to seriously consider 
what they are doing. Now, of course, we need to talk about projects like Arch Linux and where's my cursor? Like Gen 2. So we can talk about how amazing and how easy Linux is to use on distros like Ubuntu or Fedora Linux or Mint or OpenSUSE, but there's always going to be people who say, I don't care about any of that. I don't care about what amazing things you've put together. I want to basically build something myself. I want it to be hacky and jank and put together, but it's my jank. It is my hacky script, and that's the end of that. I don't care how polished it is on something like this. I want to build something. Now, I think an area where a lot of things are going to change are when it comes to the immutable or atomic distros. When we look at projects like Bazite, I don't know if Bazite's still going to be around long term, but Bazite has shown that regular people are willing to use one of these projects. Now, they're using it because they basically want SteamOS, and that's fine, but people are using this as, like, a daily driver. People are recommending this, and people are having a good experience using an immutable or an atomic system. I generally like the atomic term. I don't think either term is good. I don't foresee a world where the regular versions of Ubuntu or Fedora or OpenSUSE or Arch or Gender or anything I've talked about here are going to go away. I don't see a death to traditional package management. But I do see a world where regular people who don't really care about the intricacies of Linux are going to be using and going to be recommended distros like this more often. And projects like Fedora Silverblue, which is basically what Ublue, which is what Bazite is built off of, these are not new, right? But as more software gets containerized, as even more is done in the browser, I expect these projects to get easier and easier to use. Now, if you're someone like me that wants to get into the weeds of your system, wants to mess around with everything and change out your desk and all these different things, this is not the project for you. And this is never going to be the project for you. That's just not what they're for. But if you're someone that just wants a machine that works, I see these becoming more and more popular. If you want to build, like, you know, a gaming PC or a media PC, or you just do everything in Chrome, for example, or Firefox, whatever browser you're using, I can see a world where people are suggesting, just use this. Now, there are a lot of distros, Bazite to some extent being one of them, like CacheOS, PicaOS, Nabara, Omaki, or Omachi, apparently is how you say it where I would call them a flavor of the week distro, where maybe they've been around for a few years, maybe they've been around for a few weeks, and they're popular now, but they're one of these projects where they sort of rise in popularity, then something else comes along and it just falls back down, and then another one, and back down. And a lot of projects are like this, where they might stick around for a long time, but they aren't really a thing people are talking about or people are using after, you know, a couple of months. I do think a lot of the improvements that projects like Cache US are going to be around a decade from now, but do I think that people are going to be actively using it? Same thing with Nabara or Pika OS or, again, Amaki. Probably not. There's probably going to be something else that comes along, which is a thing that grabs everybody's attention, and then for a couple of months people are talking about that, and then move on to the next thing. And I think that part I can guarantee. There will be some new flavor of the week distro that everybody's talking about. Who knows what it's going to be though, but there will be something. But what do you think? What do you think is still going to be around? What do you think people are still going to be using? Do you think anything we have right now is still going to be here? Or do you think nothing at all is going to change? Honestly, I kind of lean towards that one, but you know, that's just me. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you liked the video, go like the video. If you want to subscribe, go subscribe as well. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, the Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and nothing will be here. We will all be dust. <laughs>
Like this.